Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Bell Qualifier DLX MIPS helmet. Bell's Qualifier DLX MIPS is a sporty street helmet with a couple of standout features and a reasonable price tag of 230 quid. It's hard not to start with the visor, which changes from clear to tinted when it's exposed to daylight, and it also has a MIPS liner inside, which is a neat bit of extra safety that you won't even know is there in everyday use, but it might turn out to be a big help if everything goes horribly wrong one day. But let's run through the basics first. Qualifier DLX MIPS runs a plastic shell and the whole helmet weighs in at 1600 grams for this size medium on our scales. That's a bit above the average for a sports helmet, but it's not too bad, and it doesn't feel heavy when riding in my experience. There are vents through the chin bar and then two sets above the visor. The chin vents channel air through two slash cuts on the inside of the chin bar, and also a series of small slits on the upper surface of that chin bar, which directs some air to the visor. There are four vents immediately above the eye port, just here, which then give a direct flow of air through the EPS to give you a good cooling effect on your head. And then on top, these two sliding vents reveal holes that reach down into the helmet interior. Now that one's more about allowing hot air to rise from the interior and then be pulled through this scoop over the top of the helmet and then out through the exhaust ports here. I wore this helmet on a Yamaha FZ1 Phaser and I found the chin vent and forehead vents just here to bring through a noticeable amount of air. The one on top here was less pronounced than its effect, but that's exactly what I'd expect really, as the idea seems to be to draw warm air away from the inside rather than send cold air flowing inside. So onto the visor, like I said, this is probably the best thing about this helmet. And if that sounds like a criticism of the rest of the lid, then I don't mean it to. At night, this visor is perfectly clear as it is here indoors today. But if you take it out in the daylight, then it reacts straight away to UV light tinting to the point where it goes as dark as a race visor. It doesn't have to be bright sunshine outside for it to react. Even on cloudy days, there's enough UV light to make this go dark. If there is even a mild criticism from me, then it's that it can go a little bit darker than I would have liked for some conditions. But not once in my time with this helmet or also other helmets that use this type of visor did I find my vision to be a problem because of the level of tint. Having a visor like this does away with the need for an internal sun visor. This helmet doesn't have one, obviously. It's a little bit less flexible than having a sun visor, as you can lift one of those out of the way if you want to. But personally, I would rather have a light reactive visor than deal with the extra weight and also the extra faff of having a sun visor. For me, this is the best solution to riding in differing light conditions, and I hope it's not too long before all helmets come with light reactive visors like this. This one is also anti-fog coated, which does away with the need for a pin lock insert on the inside as well. As with all fog coated visors I've ever used, I found this one wasn't quite perfect. It doesn't fog as such, but if I leave it without airflow for long enough, the moisture from my breath will capture in the coating, which then creates a mottled effect on the inside of the visor that does make things look a little bit blurry. Now that's still loads better than trying to look through a fogged up visor and lifting the visor will get some air on it and that will soon clear that moisture away. Now, nothing is perfect when it comes to preventing visor fogging, even a pinlock. Pinlock is more effective than a coating like this one, and it will be better when the weather gets really nasty. But the only time I found this one to struggle was when I was riding slowly around town in the rain. So if you want something for all year riding and all weathers, then I think a pinlock protected visor will be better for you. But for the majority of riding conditions, I would expect this to work really well. And this helmet isn't trying to be an all weather, all year riding helmet. So I'm not criticizing it. I'm just pointing out what I would expect from it and also what I wouldn't expect from it. The lifting and lowering mechanism for the visor is very simple and there are only really three stages. You've got fully open, fully closed, and then a visor clearing position. So a smaller cracked position, more like here would be handy, but you can't have everything. It's really simple to change the visor. It takes about 10 seconds and that's without even rushing. So there's one thing that I will say on top of all of this about this visor, there's a massive financial incentive to look after it. If you need a new one of these visors, that will cost you £194 at the prices as we make this video, which is only £37 less than the price of a new helmet at full list price. And sometimes it's cheaper to buy a whole helmet in a clearance sale than it is to buy just the new visor. 
So keep it clean using only water and clean dust-free cloths to wipe it down. Never use any form of cleaner on the coated inner surface either as you will probably wreck that coating and make the visor unusable. If I had one of these lids, I'd also consider keeping it in the bag when I'm not using it just to make sure it doesn't gather a load of dust on the surface that can end up scratching it. Okay, so let's move to the inside. The foam lining is fully removable and it's covered with a nice brushed material. So I think of that as being a bit more road friendly and I would expect it to get a bit warm inside if I was using it for intense track riding. The pads all fit in there really neatly and behind there sits that safety benefit that I mentioned at the start. And that's because this helmet has a MIPS liner. That's a yellow layer that sits on the inside of the helmet and it's attached to the EPS impact liner with some flexible bands. The principle is that that liner will allow your head to move very slightly inside the helmet if you suffer a glancing blow in an accident, something like that, rather than a direct impact. Nature has its own equivalent, it's called the scalp, and it slides over your head if you fall over, which reduces the deceleration forces that you experience inside your head. And MIPS works in a similar way, it helps control the rate of deceleration inside your head. That's sort of my kind of safety improvement really, it's there to do a job if I'm ever unlucky enough to need it, but for the rest of the time I've got absolutely no idea that it's in there. So behind all of those linings there are recesses as well for intercom speakers, I fitted in a pair of 40mm speakers from Ocado packed all bold quite happily and I also fitted a whole Senna ST1 intercom which went in there very neatly. You can stick your speakers direct to the EPS if you want, but there are also handy pockets in the cheek pads that open up and then they swallow the speakers if you want to keep them in there. It's just a little bit easier than attaching them to the helmet. So final bits with the interior, the fastener is D-rings, as I'd always hope to find in a sporty helmet like this. And there's also a chin curtain popper in here to reduce drafts and noise. If you do find your visor getting a bit blurry, then it's worth trying the lid with the chin curtain out, as that will help the moisture from your breath escape through the bottom of the helmet, rather than gathering on the inner surface of the visor. So let's cover sizing and approvals before I wrap up. The Bell Qualifier DLX MIPS comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large. There are three shell sizes available. The smallest covers helmet sizes extra small and small. Medium and large size helmets share their shell size and then XL and above go into the biggest shell. This helmet's approved to ECE 2205 for the road and it's also ACU gold so you can wear it on circuits here in the UK. It also scored three stars out of five when it was tested for the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Program. For me, the strongest appeal to this helmet is that light reactive visor. Not having to mess about with sun visors or swap from a dark visor to a clear visor depending on the time of day is a real plus point. But the rest of the helmet is also good. If you're not looking for something that will excel in prolonged wet weather riding, then I think the Qualifier DLX MIPS is a thoroughly decent option. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Bell Qualifier DLX MIPS helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.